Leaving libraries behind is one of my favorite things to do. I know it sounds weird, but I'll try to explain. On a sunny afternoon in Papagaran Island, one of the islands in Komodo National Park in Eastern Indonesia, I came to rotate the books at Taman Bacaan Pelangi or Rainbow Reading Gardens, an initiative I started three years ago to establish children's libraries in remote areas in Eastern Indonesia. Every time I go to our libraries, it's always chaos. These kids are thirsty for books. They're always looking forward to a new collection of books and listening to our new stories that we share. And during the reading sessions together, they would grab a book and start reading to themselves. It's really beautiful. After a few storytelling sessions, it's time to go. And I have this so many kids following me, strolling down the jetty. They're always so happy, waving and smiling between bursts of goodbyes. And I feel so good. So nothing beats the feeling of leaving a library behind. Now I'm going to tell you three stories. That day, in Papagaran Island, there were two nine-year-old girls chatting next to me, and I overheard their conversation. One asked the other, Hey, what country are we in? The other answered with a straight face. She said, Malaysia. Oh my God. <laughs> I had to pick my jaw up off the jetty. I was so shocked. I couldn't believe my ears. How could girls in their third grade don't even know what country they live in? Another story that also breaks my heart was when I showed a video of manta rays to the kids on Rincha Island, also in Komodo National Park, one of the best dive places on this planet. I asked the kids, are we allowed to catch manta rays? They said enthusiastically, yes! I asked them again, just to make sure, really? They all answered, again, with enthusiasm. enthusiasm. Yes, our dads catch them, over there! They they're all pointing at the same direction, which means they knew exactly where the mantas were. While we're all trying to save sharks, manta rays, and campaigning against anti-finning, these kids think that catching sharks and manta rays is okay in a national park. Crazy, huh? But it's not all depressing, though. Every time we open new libraries, it's always a memorable experience. For example, our latest library, the 26th, was located in a tiny small island in East Nusa Tenggara called Mesa Island. And as soon as we opened the boxes and showed the kids the books, they went, wow, with sparks in their eyes, priceless. There are over 17,000 islands in Indonesia and Rainbow Reading Gardens is focusing on the eastern part of the country. Why? Eastern Indonesia is not like Java or Bali. The further east you go, the less there is in some ways. Amazing, amazing communities, but less electricity, less internet, less schools, less information, less books. Eastern Indonesia has the highest illiteracy rate in the country. And East Nusa Tenggara has always been ranked the lowest in the national school exam. A teacher who manages our library on Komodo Island told me that several students in her junior high school were still illiterate. Again, I was so shocked to hear it. How could someone pass a national elementary school exam if he's illiterate. It doesn't make sense to you, right? No. But unfortunately, that's the reality that we're still facing today. 
so I've made it my responsibility to give access to as many kids in Eastern Indonesia books. Access to books. It started small. Three years ago, I used my own money and started my first library with only 200 books in a small village in Flores. And now, three years later, those 200 books has turned into over 20,000 books throughout 26 Rainbow Reading Gardens locations and in the hands of 3,000 kids across 11 islands in Eastern Indonesia, which are in Flores, Lombok, Sumbawa, Sulawesi, Spice Islands in Maluku, and also in Timor, in Atambua, in the border of Indonesia and East Timor. Thanks to social media and people around the world who have donated books, travelers headed to Indonesia, moms in the Netherlands, friends who come from different parts of the country, and also major international organizations and corporations showed their support. How does it work? Well, first, I looked at what doesn't work. Typical library programs in Indonesia look like this. First, top-down, government-run, with a focus on big buildings. Guess what happens? People don't go visit. Someone in the village told me that they're scared just to go to the library because they felt like they have to put on nice dress, clean clothes, and wear nice shoes. So they feel intimidated just to enter the building. So that doesn't work. Mm -mm. Second, villages that have school libraries only stock textbooks. So for kids, of course they feel like they have to do more homework, right? So that doesn't work either. And third, same books remain in the same libraries forever. They don't get replaced, they don't get rotated, which is boring. And fourth, library staffs are just act just like a receptionist or book guards. So we decided to approach it differently. To make Rainbow Reading Garden sustainable, we collaborate with the local people in each area. So every time we want to open new libraries, we usually hold a meeting with head of the village, school principals, teachers, and also the elders. So the idea is we provide all the books and they provide the space and people who will manage the library. And this partnership is really, really important because we want to build a sense of belonging in them. And then our locations are not at school or not in the government buildings. No. Why? Because in some villages, the schools are really far from where the, the community actually lives. Students have to walk for one hour or even more just to go to school. So our libraries are located in local people's houses or in the community center or in the cultural center. Kids can reach at, at any time and then in a more casual environment. And then in each library, there are at least 500 to 2,000 books. And we rotate these books every six months. The idea is so that the kids can get new collection of books regularly. And we also partner with airlines and passing boats to transfer the books to these islands. And I want them to fall in love with books. But to do this, I have to start stimulating their interest in reading first by providing books that are fun to read, like books with a lot of illustrations and colors, storybooks, folk tales, adventure books like Tintin, Asterix and Obelix, Kids Encyclopedia, books that we all love to read when we were kids. And once they start falling in love with books, they will read anything. And lastly, we hold two-day workshops for our volunteers who manage libraries and teach them how to do storytelling with books and origami and also teach them how to create interesting programs for the libraries beyond book guards. 
our library staff are all educators, even the ones who are actually fishermen. And we also want to involve as many people in Rainbow Reading Gardens. So we collaborate with a book drive and fundraising campaign <coughs> called Drive Books Not Cars, in which people can donate children, children's books and then put them in drop boxes that are located in cool hangout places in Jakarta. And also we always ask people to drop by at our libraries and share about their professions to inspire the kids, to broaden their minds so that they know that there are actually so many professions out there that they can choose when they grow up. I do a lot of media interviews and they always ask me the same question. What do you want for Rainbow Reading Gardens? I want to build hundreds of libraries in Eastern Indonesia. I get emotional. <laughs> libraries that are full and equipped with good books and good facilities. And some of these libraries would become learning centers in which kids can not only reading books, but also learn arts like music, drawing, develop their soft skills. And I want them to leave their villages, get a scholarship, go to university, entering national and even international competition, and then come back home and change lives. Make their village proud, make Indonesia proud. And I believe books are the first step in this process. One day, a local man who manages one of our libraries told me, Mila, my student came to me with his science exam in his hand. He got 90 out of 100. With pride in his eyes and smile from ear to ear, he said, Pa, or Sir, I found the answers to these questions not from the school textbooks, but from a kid's encyclopedia at Rainbow Reading Gardens. I smiled. I know nurturing children's interest in reading is a long-term project. So seeing this small baby impact already makes me happy. I like the little victories. They taste the sweetest. Thank you. Yeah.